Old fogies like me. Hello my friends and welcome to another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Thank you for joining me today. Let's look at the Nintendo News, please. Yes, let's do it. It's a tale as old as time. Giant entertainment companies team up to try to open a theme park and then a global pandemic strikes and, uh, and, uh, messes up all of their plans. Very, it's a, it's an old trope. It's an old storytelling trope. No, Super Nintendo World has been forced to close. Uh, you might remember a while back, um, they finally opened. They had their big grand opening after a delay. And then of course they were at reduced, uh, reduced occupancy or whatever. Capacity, that's the word. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Reduced capacity. Uh, then they had to reduce it even more because apparently cases have been kind of exploding in Japan state of emergency in Osaka. And now, unfortunately, they have been forced to close. Uh, there's no word, obviously, on when they'll be able to open again, but, you know, obviously it's when the state of emergency lifts and they get things under control again. It's like sort of one of those things where it's kind of like, what did you expect? It didn't really seem like it was gonna work. Um, but it is also just disappointing. I can see why they're very eager to open, but yeah, what'd you expect? <laughs> I don't know. Recently, first four figures revealed a uh, cool Rivali statue, and now they just revealed a cool Kirby statue. Um, at the time of this recording, they have not revealed uh, full info. They were planning a live stream uh, at a later time to give more info, but yeah, basically, there you go. Pre-orders will be coming soon for a neat little Kirby statue from first four figures. It leaked and leaked and leaked and was rumored and rumored and rumored. And finally, one of Capcom's worst kept secrets uh, is finally official. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles come to Switch, getting localized, uh, which is great. Lots and lots of people very, very excited about that. Great to finally, even if we knew it was coming, great to finally have a word on it. People are finally getting info about it. So that is Nito. I still have the original trilogy sitting on my Switch and I gotta play it one of these days. I gotta. The Switch is now officially the sixth best selling console of all time uh, in Japan. And that includes both, uh, you know, home console and handheld, which is impressive because they really, really love their handhelds in Japan. Uh, and in fact, uh, through the rest of this year, the Switch is basically guaranteed to overtake both the PSP and the PS2. That's a big one right there. This Twitter account where we get this information, Video Game Charts, uh, asserts that it will probably overtake the 3DS in mid-2022, and then it still has a long way to go for DS and Game Boy, um, but yeah, sales of the Switch are still really, really healthy, still got a lot of years ahead of it, so I would not be surprised. Golly, the Switch is just a giant phenomenon right now. It's amazing to see that there are still, like, the DS and the Game Boy were just that big of a deal. <laughs> Even back when gaming was so much smaller, it's, they still sold that amazingly well. It's very interesting. Somebody has dug up a bunch of pictures of Nintendo's old factories uh, back in the 70s, which is pretty interesting. Back then, um, obviously they weren't really super hard in the video games yet. Um, they were mostly producing Hanafuda cards. So very interesting to just see the old buildings and the old production lines. Back when Mario was but a twinkle in Shigeru Miyamoto's eye. What a, what, what a strange time in history, pre-Mario. Old fogies like me may remember way back in the day when Nintendo, uh, you know, they gave us the, the Game Boy camera and you could buy like a little printer to print stuff. And then of course with Pokemon Snap, you could take your cartridge into like, it was like blockbusters or something. See these kiosks to like print little pictures of your uh, Pokemon. Um, we've kind of got a new version of that. Uh, Fujifilm has put out like kind of a little, um, a little personal printer basically, like the Game Boy printer, except it's for whatever. And of course, probably very wisely uh, because of new Pokemon Snap, uh, Pokemon Company and Nintendo kind of teaming up with Fujifilm to kind of, you know, there's, they're even releasing uh, versions of this little printer with like Nintendo packaging, um, a couple different Nintendo games. You can have like borders and stuff. Um, I still am hesitant. I, <laughs> sorry, the idea of this kind of product does feel a little weird to me. Um, maybe just the novelty of printing because we've moved so far away from printing that now it's kind of fun, especially like for kids or whatever. Um, I'm not really sure, uh, but it's fun at least, you know? We got a new Pokemon Snap coming and you can get a little printer. <laughs> you can print out your Pokemon Snap pictures. That's pretty cool, I guess. Speaking of Pokemon Snap, uh, as you probably know, new Pokemon Snap is being developed by uh, Bandai Namco. And apparently they landed that gig by doing a great job on Pokemon Tournament. The Pokemon company was just impressed with the work that they did. And so that's kind of how they uh, transitioned into working on new Pokemon Snap. So that's pretty cool. I mean, Bandai Namco, they've been doing 
They're they're good. They're good. <laughs> they're good peoples. They do good work. It certainly looks like the Pokemon Snap series, as I suppose it is now, is in uh, good hands. A couple other bits of Pokemon news. Uh, Pokemon Company is launching a Pokemon Fossil Museum tour. Basically like a traveling museum exhibit uh, that shows off like real fossils of dinosaurs and animals and then kind of comparing them to uh, like fossil Pokemon, but like showing the fossils themselves and kind of like showing where, you know, the science that they reference to make these fossil Pokemon and, and comparing them to the real thing. So it's kind of a, you know, it's fun. It's a little, you get to learn about Pokemon, but you get to learn about something real, <laughs> something actual as well. Pretty fun. Right now it is only confirmed for Japan. Unfortunately, I would love to go, uh, but uh, who knows? Sega is going to be releasing a line of Pokemon arcade machines. Uh, this is another thing that is Japan only. I believe arcades are still a lot more popular there than they are here. Here, not much that I've seen, not a whole lot at all. Um, apparently these, uh, they're not like full video games. It's the thing where like you shoot a little coin in and you try to knock something over or whatever. Um, but it's kind of fun, I don't know. So this is funny, um, last week's roundup, I uh, actually got a copyright claim from Lego. Apparently, they are very um, aggressive when it comes to people using their stuff. And I think in particular, it's um, leaking stuff. They don't like that the Lego, uh, Lego Luigi stuff was getting leaked. Um, you know, I did a little story on how it was a rumor because the firmware update made the Mario call for Luigi, basically, like, you know, the little Lego Mario. It was like a little, Easter egg -y kind of thing, kind of uh, leading up to the reveal of Lego Luigi. Um, so they copyright claimed that. I had to clip it out of the video. <laughs> you might not have even been able to see it. Um, shortly after Walmart China kind of leaked the actual existence of Lego Luigi. But then finally now we do have the official reveal. Hey, Lego Luigi. After, you know, all the, everybody knew it by then. I, I guess I could see why they don't like, I mean, I wouldn't like leakers either. I wouldn't copyright claim people for it and fair use and all that, but well, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of a silly one. Um, uh, Taylor and Hart, which is a jewelry store, something, producer, whatever, website. <laughs> They've kind of like compiled a list of uh, jewelry from different characters in like popular media and sort of uh, done the research and tried to apply a value, like how much they would actually cost in the real world. Obviously it's very silly because you don't even know what all these materials actually are, but it's fun. It's just kind of a fun little thing. And apparently Princess Peach's crown came in at number two. It is valued at approximately 240 million pounds, which is uh, quite impressive. Uh, and if you compare that to uh, Zelda's crown in Breath of the Wild, only 18,000 pounds. Oh man, you gotta, come on. Even Link can provide you with the gems. I need to pick those up by the bucket loads. Stick some of those in a hat, call it a day. As usual, I will continue to push, to, to send out the good word of Bug Fables at no, no personal gain of mine whatsoever. <laughs> Not sponsored or anything. I just really love Bug Fables and want more people to know about it. So that's why in the roundup, Bug Fables Limited Run Games is doing a physical release. They're also doing a big collector's edition with pins and stuff and it looks super cool. Play Bug Fables, it's awesome, I love it. And I am really hoping I can get my hands on one of these. It's, oh, it's beautiful. Look at the plushie, oh, little Vi plushie. Oh, I love it. Mario Kart Tour has been downloaded over 200 million times and it has now made over $200 million. And um, it's funny, like that's just the smartphone thing, the free to play thing, like that's, that's an average of a dollar per person. That's not a lot. That's really, really low per person spending. Over 200 million people, <laughs> 200 million, that's a massive, massive amount of profit, which is sad because it seems like the more shady monetization they put into a game, the more money it makes and the more they are encouraged to do that. So now it's loot boxes and it's uh, subscriptions and all that stuff and, um, it doesn't bode well for the future, but whatever, I guess. Brazil Independent Games Fest, or BIG, is uh, the largest indie games festival thing in Latin America. And apparently Nintendo is gonna be there at the next event, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's an indie game thing, but they're still gonna be there. Uh, apparently they uh, recently, somewhat recently launched the Switch officially in Brazil. 
So they're just I'm giving, giving talks and just talking about the marketplace and stuff. And I don't know, that's pretty cool. You know, support indie games. An update on the official Monolith Soft website informs us that the company has now grown to 272 employees. The company has been growing very consistently, which is obviously very exciting for any Xenoblade fans or whatever. And uh, I know they helped out on Breath of the Wild, so there's a very fine chance they're helping out on Breath of the Wild 2 as well. Um, they make big games, and I don't play the Xenoblade games, but they look pretty cool, and I don't know, just good to see one of Nintendo's uh, studios growing. Who knows what kind of epic projects they got going. Could be Xenoblade 3, could be an export or something. Who knows? Following last week's whole thing about how the uh, official Labo site has been kind of taken down, now it just redire redirects to a different, like the Labo VR, um, which kind of led people to think maybe they're kind of ramping down Labo stuff. Uh, Nintendo apparently issued an official statement. Nintendo Labo is available at retail locations. We routinely conduct product website maintenance and reorganization. Information on Nintendo Labo can be found at Nintendo.com. So basically saying like, you can still buy it. It's not going away forever or anything. We're just messing around with the website. Um, it still could easily technically be true that they are ramping it down and that's one of the reasons it happened. Um, but at the same time, it is true. Website reorganization, all that stuff, it's possible. It's still a product that we can buy. That That is true. That is technically true. So we know that Nintendo and Microsoft, uh, you know, they've been chummy recently, obviously, especially with the Smash characters and all that stuff. And so we keep kind of going back and forth on like maybe xCloud on Switch. No, that's not gonna happen. This person says probably not. Oh, but now there's a Switch on the background of Phil Spencer's office. Maybe xCloud on Switch. No, probably not. So we're, now we're on the, I mean, it, it definitely does not seem super likely overall if they are doing something together because of the story from last week with the Switch in the background. It could just be something else entirely. Um, but now one analyst, uh, David Gibson, claims that he has spoken directly with someone at Nintendo who assured him that no streaming service, uh, you know, a competitor streaming service is going to come to the Switch. You know, no xCloud is gonna be on Switch uh, with Game Pass and all that stuff. Understandable, I'm definitely leaning more in the no direction he seems to believe just wholeheartedly, absolutely not. Um, but who knows, they could surprise us. Probably not though. Uniqlo, which has done a few different lines of Nintendo franchises, is now doing a line of Animal Crossing clothes because just can't get enough for the Animal Crossing and the merch and the clothes and stuff. So I don't know, there you go. Uh, Animal Crossing also won uh, Best Family Game at the DICE 2021 Awards. The toy one, what's it? Mario Kart Live Home Circuit won Best Racing Game. So there you go. Not really sure why Animal Crossing was, I, have we talked about this before? I like that it's been, it's been out for over a year. I'm not really sure why it's still winning awards. I don't know, I don't get it. Also, it's funny that Mario Kart, it, it's not even really a game. It's more of a toy. It's kind of funny that the one against all these other like actual video games. I don't know, whatever, moving on. Monster Hunter is getting another presentation on the 27th that will of course cover uh, updates coming to Monster Hunter Rise and stuff on Monster Hunter Stories 2, which comes out in a couple months. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm very excited to learn about the new content for Monster Hunter Rise because I am playing Monster Hunter Rise and I'm really enjoying Monster Hunter Rise and I really want the updates to come out before Pokemon Snap. I do not want to have to decide between Pokemon Snap and the Monster Hunter. Don't do that to me, please. Now we got some fan stuff, starting with some mods. Uh, Super Mario 64 Plus is a PC port of Super Mario 64 with all sorts of just cool, like quality of life features, 60 FPS, uh, permadeath mode is kind of like the big, <laughs> kind of like the big gimmicky one. Just all sorts of stuff, you know, widescreen, just all of the stuff that you wish that Nintendo would do with their own game and the modders do just cause they feel like it. You know, not gonna go into that though. <laughs> Also, I, this is even more interesting to me. Super Mario 64 Browser Edition. Browser, like you play it in your browser. It's Super Mario 64, you play in your browser and it is flawless. It's absolutely flawless. There's no latency or anything. You boot it up and it just goes. It's kind of, it's pretty impressive. It's amazing. I remember being like just amazed of, the super incredible N64 technology was the most advanced space age thing in the world. And then playing it on my DS was even more incredible. Now you just play in your browser. 
So that's cool. And, uh, and, and as always, I put sources. If you want to check out any of these, I put sources down in the description and everything. Um, we also have one Twitter user who goes by Hello Samu has created something of a mashup. Um, you know, Super Mario 2. Um, that was the lost levels. We didn't get that in America. We got the Doki Doki Panic thing. So basically, this is a mashup of Mario 2 and Mario 2. The Doki Doki Panic version and the actual Mario 2 kind of like crammed together. It's pretty fun. Right now, it's, it's just like a proof of concept. There's no like full version or anything, um, but even just seeing the little video is uh, quite entertaining. One Akrenix has created a mod uh, for Smash. Uh, it's called the No More Fire Emblem mod, which just removes all the Fire Emblem characters from the game. So many people, I've seen so many people be so like mad and snarky and like, just, I don't know, like calling this person out for just being immature. It's just a dumb joke. Come on, it's funny. It's just funny. And it's, it's even more of just a dumb joke because apparently they also came up with another mod, uh, which is a very wonderful Simpsons reference, I assume. Instead of no more Fire Emblem, it's no, comma, more Fire Emblem, which is only Fire Emblem characters. It's funny. It's a silly joke. I think it's funny. An audio producer over at Tiny Build Games by the name of uh, Ressa Schwartzwald has, has basically turned the ring con from Ring Fit Adventure into an accordion. You can like change the notes by like tilting it and it's, I mean, you know, you squeeze the ring and it's like an accordion. Very cute, oh, I love it. This is, these are the kinds of stories I wanna see for the roundup, people, it's good, keep it coming. Um, <laughs> another Twitter user, Art of NP, who seems to be very interested in just the uh, history of like Nintendo and, you know, Art of NP, especially uh, Nintendo power and stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> Apparently, Paul Rudd, you know, the famous actor, comedian, now superhero, more than anything, comedian back in my day, um, he was in some Super NES commercials. So because of that, now this person, it is their life goal to have Paul Rudd sign their Super NES. They like keep it in their trunk all the time in case they run into him. So now they're offering a reward, a thousand dollars to anybody. Anybody who can just make it happen, anyone who just knows how to just find Paul Rudd and get him to sign this Super NES. And uh, you know, I'm sure he would do it. I'm sure if he ever hears this, he'd probably do it. He seems like a pretty cool guy. Finally, YouTuber Nitro Rad, super nice guy, really great content, love his stuff, love you, love you buddy. Um, him and his girlfriend apparently turned an old broken GameCube case uh, shell into a little flower pot, like a little, like a little succulent planter. It's adorable. I love the GameCube, and I really love succulents. I think they're adorable. So this is very attractive to me. It is another one of those fan things that's not for sale or anything. It's just kind of like a, hey, look at this. I like it. Look at it cute. I like it. My friends, we have survived another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you later. I love you. Have a good day. Goodbye.